Hey, did you miss us? Oh boy, we're back. We're back. <laughs> we're back, and uh, we're throwing it back a little to the old intro from the old podcast days. But it's episode number sixty-six of Empty the Bench. It is a brand new year. It is January second, two thousand twenty-one, and for the first time in about a month. We are back with a brand new episode. Tom Albano here along with Nick Federa and Nick Morgison. As always, gentlemen, we hope I hope you had a great holiday. I hope all of you out there, too, had a great holiday season. But new year, new beginning. It's time to keep striving forward. Same old us, though. Can't get rid of us. Yeah, you can't get rid of us. And uh, happy new year to everybody. It's been a, It was a tough 2020. And now we move on to 2021. And we have a whole lot of shit to figure out. We so. do. We, we do have a lot of, uh, let's call it debris from 2020 that's still worth sweeping up, uh, especially in the, in the sports world, because everybody kind of went crazy over the past couple of weeks. Right. You're right. So, uh, gentlemen, instead of, well, obviously we have some news topics to talk about. We have stuff all over the world of football, plus a big trade going down in Major League Baseball. A couple of trades, actually, earlier this week. But let's – obviously, there was some stuff in December that, you know, we just didn't talk about because we weren't live for basically the whole month. You know, we didn't do any breaking news streams or anything like that. So we're going to do something. For all of you who know PTI, you know, there's stuff at the end, the big finish – well, we're going to do something called the big beginning in which we're very quickly going to go through a couple of topics very, very quickly. I don't want to stay on this too long. So and by the way, of... and by the way, Nick, that's not a sexual innuendo. Just want to get that out there. <laughs> so it says you. <laughs> so uh, very quickly, we're going to run through these topics. Guys, don't stand too long on this. Just give an opinion and go. All right. Let's so go. Let, let's get start with the big beginning. So first things first. The 2021 baseball season, whenever it starts, is going to be the last season where the Cleveland Indians will be known as the Cleveland Indians. By the way, I think the season's going to start in December 2021. That's just me. Yeah, uh, probably at the rate that they're going to go. Uh, but damn it, damn it, you jinxed it. But the Indians, I mean, this is apropos. We saw this happen with the Washington football team. Now we're seeing it. Uh, make its way over to baseball. And I think eventually the Braves are going to be the next team that are going to have to deal with this issue also. So I'm not surprised. Um. Well, you see, the issue here is the Cleveland, the Cleveland Indians were probably the second least racist uh, caricature of Native Americans in terms of sports teams. Well, they got rid really of... Really not much, but... Well, they got rid of Chief Wahoo a few years ago, so they were I think just. This was pre the, I think this was preemptive act, uh, action by the uh, the owner of owners of the Indians because they don't want people to throw a fit like they did with Washington because again that became a news story, and also, you can yeah. Also, uh, you know, I know some people will want the change right away, but I mean, it's kind of good that they're giving it one more season because they're you know. You don't want a disaster like what happened in Washington in that in which they made their team worse by going nameless. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do yeah, that. Oh, yeah, all right. Please, please don't do that. All right, what do we got next? Okay, let's have a bit of good news. The NHL is back, people. January 13th, the NHL will return for its 2020-2021 season. Are we though. sure that this is a real thing? Yes. I mean, it seems like it might be fool's gold, but it, I mean, from this distance, it could still be a mirage, but for right now, it looks like water. You know what's surprising to me? Gary Bettman actually got a date on the calendar and is actually getting business done. Well, here's the thing I'm the NHL. Well, here's the thing. The NHL actually kind of took its time. It didn't announce a date right away for the start of the new season like the NBA did because the NHL wanted to see how, how COVID was doing, all the legal issues, the border issue. So here's how it's going to work. The NHL is going to be a 56-game season, and they're going to divide all 31 teams. It's going to be three uh, 18 divisions based in America. And the seven Canadian teams will be their own division. You, there will only be inner division matchups, so uh, each team will play its division rivals eight times during the season. Canada, it's a little more confusing because you know there's odd number of teams. 
Um, playoffs, it's going to be four teams, the top four teams from each division, and the first two rounds will also be division only. So one division, you know, one team per division will represent in the semifinals. Well, I heard that, what was it, over the last couple of days, they officially got the approval in Canada to finally open training camps in that regard also? Right. But, so, but I say, but you know, have, keeping it the you know, competition in Canada itself will be less issue with the border, you know, travel at least until it's time to play the semifinals and finals of the Stanley Cup. Now, like the NHL, uh, I mean, like the NBA, the NHL is preferencing, you know, home arenas, some fans in attendance, if possible, if not the empty arena. But they haven't ruled out the bubble idea yet. The bubble idea is pretty much. You know, break glass in case of emergency. Wait, you mean the one thing that Roger Goodell and the NFL won't do? Correct. Exactly. Right. What do we got next? Okay, uh, maybe you could talk more about this. This James Harden drama, like, uh, you know, oh, he wants out, and now he's doing things like, you know, throwing balls at rookie teammates and going out to clubs and violating COVID protocols to, de I mean, to decrease his value. I, I wasn't really surprised by this whole situation. Now, we've had this conversation many times about the NBA, and it's the same thing over and over again. The NBA is the most progressive league out of all the leagues. The and most, most progressive-seeming league. Right, and it's what we kind of dwell on, that it's a players, power-driven league where if a star doesn't get what he wants... He has to cry to his mommy because he's a two-year-old little bitch. I'm sorry. And uh, wants the lollipop because uh, he can't get everything he wants. Now, let's go back to a situation, and I'll say it quickly. They, The Rockets offered him $50 million a year. to, uh, And we're talking about two years, $100 million. We talked about this. Well, let me ask you a question. So now we see Harden doing these things like throwing the, you know, the ball at the teammate, the COVID, breaking COVID protocol controversy, you know, because let's face it, it seems like on the surface he's trying to decrease his trade value so the Rockets can't get as much for him. Is this a point where, or is there a point rather, where Adam Silver and the league need to step in and say something's got to happen here? Well, there already is 10 day protocols. We, Towards the end of the year, I'm not talking about yeah. COVID. I'm talking about COVID combined with the situation, the toxic situation. Let's call it that. That Harden is creating and use. But well, we've seen this with stars before. We can go back to Kevin Durant when he made his toxic situation when he went from OKC to Golden State, and now Golden State to the Nets. I mean, we're and we've seen opposite situations. We saw Giannis who stayed with the Bucks on a five-year Supermax. There are stars who know how to behave themselves. It's certain stars like James Harden, and people are going to throw tomatoes at me, Rocket fans for sure. James Harden cannot prove that he can win in the playoffs. He's hurting. He's And this kind of situation, I'll, I'll agree. He's hurting his legacy. He's, he's hurting, hurting his legacy. He's hurting his value. The Rockets, first of all, I think are, and this is in every league, dealing with a situation of market and money. No one is trading high value right now for anybody, whether it's a James Harden or it's a uh, six man of the year uh, Lavert off the Brooklyn Nets bench. So, ouch! No, no, but it's true. Would you agree with me that no one is putting any value on anything right now because they just don't want to take the risk? Well, I mean, in terms of cert signing certain star players like Giannis, you know, they're willing to throw the money out for. But I'm saying, like, it's going to be really hard in this COVID related market to trade James Harden because they want three first round picks and they want one or two stars. No one is trading that at all. Especially not with how Harden's behaving. And James Harden going into the strip clubs and breaking COVID protocol and not wearing a mask. This is him uh, crying out for attention. Speaking of crying, Listen, let's go to I you. I want to go to Brooklyn and I'm going to get to Brooklyn if I have to make myself absolutely toxic. Speaking of crying, yes, I see the story that's up on the bottom. So now, the Jets ended up... Uh, Go, go, go ahead. Can I say this? When when the guys, when we were putting together our campaign for Christmas and you said that you were going to make the, the what was it? The Number last one. line was, and a Day goddamn one. winless jet season. What did I say the words that I said to you? What did yes, I say? They're going to win games now. And what do they do? They end up winning two games and they completely fuck up the number one overall pick. And, and they can't even win correctly. 
Well, if you saw yesterday's college football semifinal, a little bit of a talk about, you know, did they truly? A little bit of a problem there with old Trev. Just, I was going to say, Justin, I mean, Justin Fields kind of, you know. Got hurt. Yeah. He got hurt. No, but then but he then came, came back. back like he was the $6 million man. And threw five touchdown passes in this game. <laughs> Maybe even six. I forgot. See, but I don't first, think the Jets. First of all, just a stray observation. Is it just me or does Dabo Swinney sound like Foghorn like Gordon when he well, talks? <laughs> well, Dab <laughs> Dabo came out and said that Ohio State uh, didn't deserve to be in the game. And somehow uh, Ohio I State. I the now, Sam. Oh, Ohio State okay. used that as fuel, but right. Well, everyone's talking about Ohio, how somehow Ohio State got in here after three or four of their games got canceled due to COVID. Just imagine if Ohio State goes into January 11th, whenever it is, and upsets Alabama. I will laugh. <laughs> yeah, that was, well, I think the I think Ohio State is a seven and a half point underdog, but that could change. But back to the whole Jets situation. Yes, I'm upset, even though, and everyone is complaining. Well. Why? Why do teams always when they're tanky? Why do they want their team to lose? Like, why because don't you want them to win? The players are not going to be going to play to lose. Well, Tom, make the statement that you were making to the two of us about how players play. They pl players, you know. Let's talk about an old Jets coach and Herm Edwards. They play to win the game. Oh gosh, but yes, they play to win the game. I mean, I I'm kind of upset. I'm I'm, I'm just saying, you know, if. They told if the coaches told the players, you know, all right, you guys are going to go out there and lose. If I'm a player, what I wouldn't even bother showing up for the game. And then that's when you would see Goodell and everyone get all PO'd. Yeah, by the way, and when we heard the news, which I don't know if it's, well, I guess it's part of this topic, Adam Gaze officially gets fired. Well, and that's, we'll talk about that a little bit. I say I still am questioning the words officially, but there is one more thing in the big beginning we have to talk about. No sports league will jump the line with a COVID vaccine. Now we already kind of discussed this towards the end of the list of their 2020 shows with the NFL and NBA, both saying they're not going to. And now during the December time off, major league baseball has also said it will not make its athletes, you know, jump anybody in a, in a higher priority. Well, so what that, so what that means is when it's available to the players that are in that group that qualify, they will get it. Not before. Well, there's one thing you're leaving out, which is they told the owners, do not go behind our backs with all your connections and buy the vaccine. I'd say, and this is actually a decision I'm kind of praise, you know, praising because, you know, those healthcare workers who have been dealing with this COVID, these different strains of COVID now and being on the front lines for nine months, they kind of deserve it first. They well, deserve it first. Can we, can we say before we continue, can we praise, and I was saying this on another show I do. I don't call them healthcare workers. I call them healthcare heroes because absolutely. I mean, mm -hmm. the thing they've had to do, they've had to deal with no human being should ever have to do. And I hate to, and I hate to say this because we are a sports podcast, but those first, you know, those first few months of the COVID situation kind of showed us we don't really need sports. Right. And I agree. And we talked about this. You can go back and look at our best ofs. We t we had to do episodes for how long? Like three, we four weeks. We were kind of vamping for a while. I'd say for like a good couple of months, you guys were hing hinging on me for UFC and WWE stuff. Hey, it was needed. We needed something to talk about. <laughs> we were getting to the point where we were thinking about discussing curling, for God's sake. We were. <laughs> well, and that's no joke. We, If you go back and look in our episodes, we do joke about that. But yeah. just... Long story short on this, I, I praise the owners of the league because they're not doing they're not being the all greedy and uh what's the word I'm looking for now? Uh, we'll we'll see when here. it comes when it comes to MLB, we'll see how that plays out because the owners supposedly want the vaccine and then you know they won't start the season until all the players are vaccinated, but that well, means a reduction of the 162 games. The players want full pay again, so we might be yeah. heading down another rough ship. Yeah, and and if you want to go check out our episodes on our Facebook page uh, at Empty the Bench, you can see we had whole conversations. We talked to Jesse Rogers of ESPN, uh, who was an MLB analyst. We talked to – I spoke to Mike Farron about this of Sirius XM MLB Network Radio, and they all said this is going to be a mess, and they got to figure it out. All right. So speaking of, let's jump to the football side of things. Kind of a big transition, a good transition into the big story this week. We were going to talk about something baseball related, you know, but that'll be next because over the past 24 hours, 
NFL Week 17, probably one of, I, and I have to say this Week 17, probably one of the most highly anticipated and most, you know, playoff affecting Week 17s that we've had in quite a few seasons in the NFL. And COVID is running wild. It's crazy. And the way this week is gone and we find out, I don't know, where do we want to start? I guess we can start with Alvin Kamara of the Saints, the running back of the, the star running back of the Saints, who had six touchdowns last week. Mine. Yeah, after, 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 you know, pulling off a, a performance for the history books. And now he's not going to play in week 17. And depending on what the NFL does with the Saints when it comes to their playoff matchup, he may not play in wildcard weekend either. Well, it's 10 day quarantine now that he's officially positive. So Right. Well, they're saying if he if the Saints are scheduled for Saturday, he's out for certain. If the Saints are scheduled for Sunday the 10th, he has a shot. But what Which, is that quar that quarantine is retroactive to Friday or they they haven't said when he tested positive, so we're still trying to figure that whole thing out. But now it's leading to all this high risk contact tracing and Mr. Contact Tracer can talk about this in in a minute or two. Right. I'd say well, let me let me List off some of the names because here's a little post from our new Instagram account at ETV Sports where I have listed several of the names here. So Alvin Kamara is out. And actually, we just got the breaking news today that his backup is number two, Latavius Murray, also is out. Due and to being Dwayne out. Washington also. And Dwayne Washington. Uh, Devin White, perhaps one of the best, if not the best linebacker, uh, best person on, you know, the best linebacker on that Tampa Bay Bucks team. Positive for COVID, I believe he's out. Steve McClendon, out. Darian Thompson of the Cowboys, Cowboys. I believe, yep. out. Shaq Barrett of the Cowboys, out. Justin Hamilton, out. Giants offensive line coach Dave DeGuglielmo, out. COVID. And several players on the Eagles offensive line, out. Devin COVID. White. Devin White also of the of uh, the. Buccaneers. I said Devin White, yeah. Right, who is officially tested positive. So... I mean, COVID has not affected the league this in a in a wider spectrum. It, it seems like year. Every, well, it seems like every five weeks or so or so with this league, there's always some sort of yeah, little bit a of a huge, big breakout. A huge chunk of players and personnel uh, either test positive or they have to quarantine because of con uh, due to contact tracing. But again, <laughs> if this was unexpected to you. I, I would advise you to take the sticks out of your ears <laughs> and I, I would advise you to take the blindfold off because how could you not have seen this coming? If you refused to do a bubble, if you refused to do a bubble, this is what was going to happen. Well, and that's what again, I said. Joke is on us because we were the ones making fun of, Oh, the bubble's not going to work. Oh, pop the bubble. But you know what? Eggs on our faces because it does work. Nobody else seems to take that right. lesson. Right. Say, but but we realized it worked yeah. when the NFL was starting in July. I mean, late July and early. I mean, not the NFL. The NBA and NHL were starting in late July and early August. And we said, maybe the NFL needs to, you know, Wake take up. note. But the NFL said, no, we're going to carry on. We'll get through any outbreaks. You know, we'll have a regular season. I mean, they... You know, they're having a season like normal. They're having a season. It's just they're having a season with big old holes. Missing. Yeah, but you yeah. know what's funny? You know, season, if you will. But you know what's funny about this whole thing is that the NFL is trying to play big bad uh, man on campus. But so far, if you look at the NBA being in the bubble, they had how many positive tests? Zero. What? Well, you had a couple of cases, like some guy going out to get, oh, no. uh, get a couple of <laughs> you had a couple of morons chicken who... wing incident, quote unquote. And, and that had... wasn't a positive test, though. That was and you a had... moron, right? Well, I would say yeah, moron. And you also had somebody, you know, bringing in one of the COVID testers into the bedroom for, uh... yeah, relations. escapades. I mean, <laughs> shenanigans, escapades, relations, whatever but you the, want. Right, but you're right. The Technically, it's zero COVID cases for the NBA in the bubble. It was zero COVID cases for the NHL in the bubble. That's my point, that the NFL is acting like a bunch of shitholes. Sorry, the MLB, that's what they are. The MLB was doing great with the bubble. It had zero cases even before the bubble. It was for two months, and then the whole Justin Turner thing, uh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, the whole Justin Turner thing just... 
put a damper on that one, but we'll get to more baseball. But the, but the, but the point is, it's the point though is the bubbles, at least for the most part, work. They work. They keep people on track. They're doing constant testing. Now, I have to make one point, and Nick, you can uh, dispute. You might know a little more than I do. Testing is different from the vaccines. So you can get as much testing. You can get as much testing as you want. That's not taking away from people. The vaccine is what's taken away from people. In terms of what? What are you saying? I'm saying that we need to. They can get as much testing as they want because they're trying yeah, to. Yeah, we're athlete. not short. We're not short of tests. That's we, the point I'm trying to make. We yeah. are. We are. What is in limited supply at this point, in terms of in terms of allocation of resources, is vaccines. And you're not going to see that for at least the next couple of months. It's going to be rough going. And this is this is a failure of planning. It really is. You failed to, you have the resources and you have the ability to consider every eventuality in this pandemic. And you failed to do that. You stuck your fingers in your ears, you closed your eyes tight, and you were hoping that it would blow over. And it did not. And, and let's state one thing. And obviously, again, doing a sports show. These athletes are not essential workers. They're not essential workers. They, no matter no matter how much no matter how many ways you slice it, they are not. This is more for us to have something to watch and to get us through the pandemic. Something, something to keep our minds off of the fact that the it's, body it's count morale, is it's morale support. Really high. Right, it's, it's morale. morale yeah, you're right. So you're absolutely right. That's why I'm saying, like, let's take a step back. Let's breathe. And, and, and yeah, and I'll say, you know, when I was saying with morale support and at the beginning of this whole NFL thing, you know, it's great to see sports on our television again. It's great to see the NFL. You know, I tune in every Sunday. I tune in all the as many games as possible. But stuff like this, you know, it's unfortunately inevitable at this rate with how the NFL has been going. And let me say one more thing, because then we got to move on for time mm -hmm. purposes. I and we put this out. Uh, I don't remember how long ago it was. But I had COVID-19. I'm telling you, I had COVID-19. I was positive for COVID. And it's just, it's a completely different situation. You just got to calm down, get through it, uh, stay away from people, which we're still having issues with staying away from people. There were people on New Year's and on Christmas that were having parties. This is the problem. And it's going to happen with sports because we Wear a mask. Right. Wear a mask. And unfortunately, because these guys are constantly in, uh, in practice, you're going to get people who contract the virus. That's just and, what's going to happen. And considering uh, my own kind of situation that had happened, I'll, I'll top one thing, you know, above the mask. If you're sick, stay the fuck home. Yes. I'm sorry to curse, but stay home. No, you're you're yeah. perfectly in your right because uh, I'm with you on that. Seriously. So it, just, just you, you hate to have to keep drilling these lessons into people almost a year on to pandemic. But again, people do not learn. Can I just say one more thing, which is yep. a Buffalo Bills game. And this got me really pissed off, PO'd in a lot of ways. Well, because uh, Governor Cuomo is going to be there and is yeah. allowing 6,000 socially distanced. Way to, and... take, way to take the exact wrong lesson from this, Mr. Governor. Yeah. And you know Can what? Please. You know what? F Governor Cuomo. And I'm sorry, this is not a political situation but what you, you put out on social media oh i'm going to the game to watch it yeah you're going to the game but you're not freaking stopping people from social distancing and mask problems hypocrite just get just get us vaccinated you yo just get us vaccinated you oh i can't say what i okay <laughs> let's move on. Let's move moving on. on let's talk about some big sports news non-covid related that kind of you know shook the world up this week and oh, that's, that got me going yeah so uh let's so obviously it's a baseball story it's not about the negotiations it's about a team making moves. wait a minute there's hot stove news it's hot stove news, but it's not the yankees no. it's not it's not the newly steve cohen mets it's of all teams the san diego padres eh? wait a minute wait a minute say that again i did uh say that again the San Diego Padres. Okay, okay. Just want to That's make sure. That's what I thought you said. But so, can you uh, announce the full trade before we go in yeah. here? Okay. Well, let's give some context. So context is necessary. So if you remember the trade deadline of 2020, we saw a couple of big moves by the San Diego Padres in a 
kind of a push, you know, to acquire, you know, talent so that way, you know, for a World Series push. Because basically, with how good their talent is, how good their farm system is, the fact that they have Manny Machado, Eric Cosmer, and all these deals, they are basically all in on trying to get a World Series. Hey, and they, they have the best star in all the majors right now in Tatis Jr. also. Tatis Jr., correct. But obviously, Clevenger ended up hurting himself during the playoffs, and that pretty much sparked the end. By the way. Are you going to gloat right now also because of one of the moves? Well, let's let's talk about it. So first, the first <laughs> trade that happened is the Padres acquired Blake Snell from the Rays in exchange for Luis Patino, Cole Wilcox, Blake Hunt, and Francisco Mejia. So now I'd like to say something. If you guys remember during World Series Game 6 when Nick and I were having the post-game live stream, I had said... When Blake Snell was taken out early, if I'm Blake Snell, I am marching to my agent. I am saying, get me the hell out of Tampa Bay. Well, wait well, a guess minute. Guess what? He's no longer in Tampa Bay. You wait a minute. It, you called it. Take a bow. Take a bow. No, you definitely earned that one for sure. But I have to make one point. What Nick has said it, but I said it in a much more okay. blunt way. The Tampa Bay Rays, and I think it's the whole state of Florida because I think they forgot how to play baseball. But the Rays and the Marlins... They go through two or three years uh, uh, terms being and then being Mr. Strong. And then they're like, oh, wait, I, we forgot. We're the small market team. Now we got to sell off and, and buy prospects. It's all about the prospects. It's all about the prospects. Okay. All about the money. Okay. So allow me, allow me to, if you'll allow me to eject some steam, allow me to vent. Because yes. this is this has been building up to me. This has been been building up in me like a pot full of rice that's about to explode. <laughs> well, if I may, first of all, first of all, props to the props to the Padres for swinging those trades. That took a lot of that took a lot of gumption to do that. That's what now it. they had the farm system to pull it off, and they pulled it off. And they didn't even give up the top, their number one uh, prospects in their system. However, I'm of the opinion. And I've said this a couple of times, but I I don't think I and it bears repeating here. The Rays are the worst thing for baseball. Not they're worse than the, they're worse than they're worse for baseball than the Red Sox or the Yankees because the Red Sox and the Yankees spend to compete. You spend money to make money. You have to get people in seats. And how do you do that? You spend to make money. You spend to get the best players in your team. That is the only way you compete. You do not go to the World Series. Go to six games. Six games. You look like world beaters. You were this close. This close to winning a World Series. And then all of a sudden, up, oh, up, oh, you know, oh, we don't win. Okay, time to blow it up. Game over. You know and and again, the owners, let's let's recap here. The owners of the Rays are billionaires, billionaires, billionaires with a B. And you know what? To sit there and cry poverty is not only cynical, it is absolutely abhorrent. They, they're, abhorrent. Called, they're called billionaires, but they play in probably the worst stadium of all of baseball. Well, the worst stadium that they, that they want the taxpayers to pay for. Are you kidding me? The fact that are they nearly went me? to Montreal. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. So you're talking about Tropicana Field, the worst stadium in all of Major League Baseball. Yes. yes. <laughs> Again, people and people always say, "Please help me out with this, guys," because people always say, "Oh, Billy, oh, Moneyball, Moneyball's the way to go." Billy Bean was that's how you really build a team. Enlighten me, fellas. How many championships did Billy Bean win when he was holding the A's? Zero. 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 Say it again. Zero. 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 Say it again. Zero. Zip. Not a buckless. Louder. Zero. That's oh, God. Well, I was going to say that that's a really good movie, by the way. If you're looking for uh, to pass it's the time. A movie. Movie. <laughs> well, actually, it did happen. They just kind of Hollywood. It did happen. It, it, but you know what that you know what that feel good story ended up being? If you don't win a World Series. It's Nothing. a good conversation topic. That's it. You, you know what's ironic though? And do you do you remember what happened at the end of the movie? And there's a reason why I say it. Yeah, they lost. No, 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 no. Do you remember the end was of that, the was movie? Was that when Billy Bean was leaving the A's? Well, he never left the A's, but do you remember what what the story curtailed? 
Wasn't it something about his family? So he was actually offered like $10 million a year to go be the GM of the Red Sox. In, and he stayed with the A's. Because yeah. he'd rather be in the situation of being the underdog. Because that's how he was. I and... Think- that is not a billion. Ooh, but okay. while, while Nick is decompressing here, do you have the trade in front of you so we can discuss? You Darvish, yes. So you Darvish. Well, this goes off on a point that Nick was talking about. It's about the deepness of the Padres you know, farm system. You Darvish was traded along with Vic, catcher Victor Caratini to the Padres, and the Cubs in exchange got Zach Davies, Owen Casey, Ismael Mina, Reginald Preciado, and Yezen Santana. If you don't know any of those names, it's because the Cubs did not get a top 10 prospect from which, the Padres. Which is incredible to me. It's incredible. They got, they got swindled. They got duped. Bamboozled. They got Usseldorf. Oh, wait. That's not a word. Uh, basically, <laughs> sorry. That's a SpongeBob reference. Uh, otherwise, basically, they got, completely, they got completely swindled. I mean, you Darvish, I mean, you could see that coming because no, and the difference you, here is that the Cubs needed to replenish their farm system. You say, you say, you say you saw that coming. Uh, apparently, you Darvish, their reports got caught. You Darvish got didn't see it coming. <laughs> he, got got he got caught off guard. He found out about the trade through Twitter and was shocked. That's bad. That, and you know what's even worse? They're on the hook now for that contract. Uh, they I, signed him to that contract in 2018. They're on the know, hook for like a hundred plus million dollars on this thing. Say what you will about George Steinbrenner and the legacy that he leaves in baseball is decidedly mixed at best. But you know what? He had it right when you said you got to spend money to make money. You want people, you want asses in seats, you give well, them the best product possible. You're not having asses in seats for quite a while now, but I you know, I on TVs. it doesn't matter as long as they're paying attention. All right, guys, now let's jump back to the NFL for a quick few more uh, stories before we get to our Week 17 picks. So another big story that came out this week, Dwayne Haskins from the Washington football team. He was the 2019, you know, he was their first round pick, and he was picked like number 15 and said, How old is he? Is he like 23 or something? He is. Let me have a look up here. He's young. like Very young. He is actually Dwayne Haskins. 23 yeah 23 okay now island park new jersey i have to make a joke because tom posted this i think you tweeted this out personally actually oh, 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 the, the, his quote when he after he got drafted that the league made a mistake drafting him so late what but what was the quote do you remember the quote to the media a league done messed up and i was laughing hysterically because that's totally what just went down here all right league done messed up well you just well, got cut because you can't well, play well 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 somebody on twitter actually on my personal twitter actually made a comment and said no he's probably right they did mess up they picked him too early <laughs> you know what they they the league pulled the old uno reverse card Oh, well, yeah, basically. Well, well, you had someone who played a, a draw for a wild and then they played a draw for a wild on top of it. So so I forget which NFL insider said this. It was somebody from NFL Network. I forget it was Breer or somebody. But over the past, you know, modern history, basically in modern history, NFL quarterbacks who were picked in the first round, they always saw at least the end of the second year, even if they were one of the biggest busts like Manziel. I think it was, was Garofolo. Think. Probably Garofalo, you're right. But like still, you know, even with somebody like a Manzel or or Jamarcus Russell, somebody who was a big bust. Those are always big bust. Huge they all, bust. But here's my point. They always saw the end of the second year of that rookie deal. Dwayne Has you know, Dwayne Haskins, his second year is technically not up yet. He is the first in as many years as we can remember, court, rookie court quarterback drafted in 2019 you know the year before who got cut before the, the, end way, of the second year by the way and i'm gonna sound off on something here so be careful but dwayne haskins is owed 4.5 million i think over the next two seasons something each. like that it's part of his rookie deal i think by the way the red oh my god i almost called them the redskins the washington football team is in no position as nick would say to barter at this point or to negotiate in this situation to cut a freaking quarterback. And on top of it, we find out that Mr. Owner has been trying to pay off people to get out of his own situation. This is a dysfunctional mess. 
here's the whole thing about the Washington football team. Yes, you know, they have quarterback troubles. Allen is basically has been done for the season. Alex Smith, you know, has been very banged up. You know, they're down to their fourth string quarterback. But here's the problem, Nick. It was time. Dwayne Haskins has just proven that not only is he an absolute bust on the field, <laughs> but he is just an absolute headache in the locker room. I mean, you know, you can say all you want. You can say, because I know, uh, what's his name? Booger McFarland has come out and has pretty much riled everybody up because, you know, and they said this when uh, Dwayne Haskins was benched early this season by Ron Rivera about black quarterbacks not being as given as much of a chance as their white counterparts. You, We can talk about that topic until the cows come home, but there is a problem. Dwayne Haskins has shown over the past two years he has lacked absolute maturity. He missed like the last play of his first NFL game because he was taking a selfie with a fan. That was pathetic. And, really and, was. And, and let's talk about the big elephant in the room in which, in which this controversy expedited was when Dwayne Haskins a couple of weeks ago was caught in some sort of club, in some sort of party at least, maskless, you know, having an old time. Do we no, see- do we see a theme here that athletes are getting caught in clubs not wearing a mask? Yes. I was yeah, saying it shows it, that some people are like not taking this. Be, it seems to me like there might be some kind of direct correlation, Sherlock. And by the way, I mentioned Ron Rivera, a cancer survivor, somebody who was going into treatments for cancer during the season. Tom, we talked about I'm, this also. We I'm, talked I'm, about I'm, yeah. Go ahead. I'm, I'll I'll say I'll end on this point, you know. Again, we can talk about the race issue all you want, but race has no connection to stupidity. Oh, because right. It doesn't matter what Dwayne Haskins, you know, is. There's one thing that that action is. He, you know, we can also talk about how young he is. You know, he makes mistakes and everything. You know, you can talk about how they have to grow up so quickly in the NFL. But I know p- young people, you know. Who wouldn't be this stupid? Who wouldn't right. make stupid actions? And on top of that, uh, and we have to move on because we're running a little behind, is we talked about this with Justin Turner and Dave Roberts. Dave Roberts, cancer survivor, as the manager of the Dodgers. Same mm-hmm. thing. It's all stupidity. Wake up. You're not invincible as an athlete. I hate this. Stupid is as stupid does. Thank you. Yes, yes it does. All right. So now let's briefly get to that. Un- I call it an unconfirmed report. So at the, of all sources that it comes from, it comes from WFAN here in New York, which is Wait a minute. Say the Will. name. Say the name. Craig Carden. <laughs> now, of course, we cannot we cannot exactly, you know, hold him up as a bastion of journalistic integrity. That's why I use the term unconfirmed. Yes, because he is not a journalist. <laughs> but still, what was it he said? All right, so it is a report, though, from a credible radio station, maybe not a credible journalist. WFAN here in New York is reporting that Adam Gase has been informed already that tomorrow's game, January 3rd against the Patriots, will be his final as the head coach of the New York Oh, shocker! It was his last game? No, I thought they were going to bring him back for another season. I mean, you never know what this Jets team is. It's the Jets, man. They they surprise you in the worst ways. You know what? I can't even I can't even like it's it's over. It should have been over halfway through the fucking season. I'm sorry. I'm just mad right now. Can't you tell I'm angry right now with this whole situation? No, absolutely yes. not. Well, we both ranted. Now you have to do it, Tom. Um, uh, uh well, let's talk about uh this thing that's been going on, another oh. report. This one's actually a confirmed report. The NFL is pushing for a 17-game season in 2021. So how it would work reportedly is it would be the same length, you know, season length. Every team would get just one bye. The Super Bowl would move from the first Sunday of February to the second Sunday of February. However, in exchange, the, the players will get something that they want that, you know, when they were talking about expanding the season, they had asked for and that the preseason will be reduced to just two or three games. I heard another report, actually, that they're trying to get rid of it completely. I don't know about that because we've seen this whole season that when you lack, you know, a full training camp and lack a, a preseason of any kind, I mean, 
hey, I remind you of week two of the NFL season when we saw all those injuries. But, Saquon and CMC going down for the season. But the weird thing is, a lot of the veterans, a lot of the big time stars, what do they look at the preseason as? A waste. They don't use it. It's a waste of th- they they see it as a waste of time, but it isn't more necessary than they think it is. No, but actually, wouldn't you be more concerned for your stars if they're playing in preseason games that they could get hurt? But that's why I'm fine with two games. You know, it's a it's that perfect balance that they can have some time, but but most stars you know. don't play in them anyway. In that sense, at least. All right, let's move on. We're over time here. Okay, so let's get to our week 17 predictions, guys. So let's talk about, you know, let's go through game by game. So Dolphins and the Bills, I won't go through every playoff situation exactly. I'll just say, you know, what they're playing for. The Dolphins are playing to be a wild card seed. The Bills are fighting with the Steelers for the number two in the AFC. And pretty much Mason Rudolph is going to be quarterback in the Steelers. So the Bills, for the most part, are in control of their destiny right now. By the way, are we shocked that we're, the way the Steelers started the season, that they're fighting for the two seed? I mean, that was uh, yeah. an ethically bad collapse. Con- I mean, considering that the Bills haven't been, you know, competitive since I was in diapers. <laughs> well, that's changing now, especially considering the Patriots are just had their first losing season since 2000. I mean, let's look at it this way. I guess uh, Governor Cuomo is going to get his whole uh, comeuppance now that he's going to get 6,000 fans inside the stadium. Oh, so. well, what, what do you see for this game? Uh I, th- I think the Bills have got it. I think they're going to lock up the two. I I think the Bills will win, but I think the Dolphins have something to play for, if that makes yeah. any sense. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a competitive game. Now, are the Bills, are they in a situation where they can just say, hey, we're going to rest the stars and uh, rest the big Te- names? Technically. So I think you're going to, probably by the end of the day, you're going to see some names that are going to sit out. So I think it'll be close, but I think the Bills pull it out somehow. Okay. I'm going with the Bills, too. All right, we move on now to the Ravens and the Bengals. Bengals are out of it completely. The Ravens also fighting for uh, an AFC wildcard seed. The Ravens got to win. That's The Ravens got to win, and they're going to come out like they need to win. So I, I, I do agree, but if guys, if you remember, speaking of the Bills, a couple of seasons ago, the Ravens were playing the Bengals. Spoiler! And- Spoiler! Andy Dalton and crew played spoiler and got the Bills into the playoffs and eliminated the Ravens. Remember they that people, I think fans were sending money to his charity and everything, weren't they? The Bills were sending Andy Dalton and the Bengals gifts for that. I think they <laughs> still are. Oh, All right. Man. Steelers and the Browns. The Browns are in quite a little bit of trouble after losing to the Jets last week, but they are still fighting for an AFC wild card. And the Steelers, again, they are fighting for the number two. However, Ben Roethlisberger will not play this week. Mason Rudolph is starting. There's going to be a lot of momentum. Miles Garrett was named the captain of the Cleveland Browns. Mason Rudolph is the starting quarterback. Oh, no. And apparently they both agreed to have a conversation, actually. Did they actually agree? Yeah, I I saw it as a report. One of them invited the other. No, they just both agreed to have a conversation. Then uh, Miles Garrett said, I'm going to listen to what he has to say. Well, I'll believe that when I see it. But... This is going to be actually one of the games that is actually going to be fun to watch, actually. I, I say, I'm kind of getting a feel. I don't know if it's because, you know, I want to see the underdog pull off, but I feel like, you know, the Steelers are going to play down to their competition again. Well, if that's the case, and the Steelers but, might as well just pack up and not go to the playoffs. But, but the Browns, you know, they're still COVID affected a little, so I don't know. Well, yeah, we can quickly go to those reports. I think I, Joe I Hayden. Really gotta, I, I really got to take COVID into effect because I really haven't. In terms of my picks this year, but I think now it's it now it's going to make a difference. So I have to pick the Steelers. Yeah, well, the Browns have been the most affected team over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, so I, I, I think I, the Steelers are going to win, but it's going to be close. Steelers, and I will say this: even if the Giants were to make the playoffs, I feel so sick that the Browns are ten and six and when and would miss and a losing record and. A- to make it i never understood that like the t- the one 10 and 16 that gets affected by the player oh well they didn't make it because of the division they're in f that speaking of which cowboys oh, are so Jesus. let me explain how this works the loser of this game is out the winner will have to watch the eagles in washington play on sunday night football to see if they become the nfc east champion that's sick that's the nfc least at its finest that's and again sick. 
And we went through the cow. We went through both teams affected by COVID. The Giants have lost their O line coach. The Cowboys have lost a couple of uh, line players themselves. That's sick. You want me to? You you want me to? Um, yeah, do you want to make the pick? Go ahead. Wait, before I'll you make the pick, Nick, I want to add one more thing to fuel your opinion here. The Cowboys had a COVID situation of their own, and they have been working. Well, I just said. Also. I said the Giants' O line coach COVID, and the Cowboys. We went through the Cowboys. So, COVID. I'm just saying that's kind of fueling. It does not, it does not change. I'm still going to pick the Giants. Uh, You're picking the Giants. I'm picking the Giants, but they will not make the playoffs. Wow. Uh, come back to me because I got to think about this for a few more seconds. I, I'm very worried. Like. If you were to have asked me a couple of days ago, I would have said the winner of this game would win because I don't see the Washington beating the Eagles. Now that the Eagles have having their own COVID situation, well, I mean, we'll get to that when we do that game. But in terms of this game, I'm worried because the Cowboys pretty much spanked the Eagles. But Yeah, but I'm you worried. can't go by the NFC least. Come on. <laughs> I know, but I'm worried that the Giants. You know, Danny is hurt. He is. He's staying in the pocket more. He's not throwing, you know, as well as he could. Yeah, they said he's going to stay in the pocket until he's healthy again. So I'm going to go Cowboys. I need the Giants to show me something tomorrow. Yeah, I I think the Cowboys win, and unfortunately, I think Daniel Jones has turned into a bad version of Eli Manning with cement feet. So I, I will say, no matter what, you know, as sick as I will be if they lose on Sunday. It, it's been nice to actually see, you know, to week 17 to feel something. Wait, competitive football, you mean? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Is that what that feels like? Yes. And here, right, I thought, and here I thought it was stomach cramps. Oh, hey, let's talk about this game. <laughs> You know what the sad part is? Like they actually have a chance to win this game. Believe it I'll give you one better. They will win this game. No, Ooh. wait a minute. You said it before Ooh. I did. Whoa, 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 whoa. Could you imagine? Ooh, you know, somebody make a note of that. Tom went there. <laughs> because, you know, the Jets have actually, you know, looked like a different football team over this past month. Think about this. They would have they would be a three win team if it wasn't for Greg Williams' love of the blitz against the Rangers. That was sad and pathetic, and I will still so, call them out for that's that. what I'm just saying. Imagine now that there's nothing left to play for and maybe a chance to blow their well, actually no, because I mean what's the next worst record? What did the uh, as, what did the, the Texans Jaguars? Play? The Jaguars. No, after after the Jaguars, is it? The oh, Texans? I don't know. It's probably the, the Texans, Texans who are four and eleven. Okay, so they can't get worse than number two. So at this rate, why not just end your season by giving Belichick one good gut punch? Well, of course, I'd be happy. Well, guys, did you see that incident on the sideline where he threw, threw the, the phone? One. I'm just I'm just saying, but with how the Patriots are going, their worst season since 2000, would this not be the appropriate ending? I mean, it would be, and it might be Cam Newton's swan song, depending on what they decide, because I heard they might bring him back, which I'd be surprised because basically the Patriots reach into the cheap bin and they take everybody for one year and then they throw them in the trash. For my point, I'm, I'm going Jets. It's going to happen. Wow. You said you, well, wow, you're confident. I don't know if I'm confident, but I'm not I'm exactly, I, I'm I not exactly, that bold. I'm not exactly confident. But Wait a minute. Am I the unfortunate tiebreaker in this yes. situation? Oh my God. No. This is not where I wanted to be the tiebreaker in this situation. Oh, God. Okay, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but the Jets are going to win this game. The Jets are going to win this game. They're going to make me feel incredibly terrible as a Jet fan. How is that <laughs> different from any other week, dude? Yeah. <laughs> oh. but I'm going to laugh when Bill Belichick completely goes and, and the president, all right, uh, we, we played terribly, and Cam Newton, we don't know if he's going to come back this season, and... Uh, I guess we're off to Cincinnati. Tom, okay. That now, was actually a pretty good Belichick impression. And Tom, I miss you. <laughs> Did you yeah. see someone put that out? Uh, I don't know who put that out on Twitter, but I saw someone made like an actual like claymation. Like, oh, I, I didn't see. I thought you were talking about the meme I made where, you know, he it's like the freaking superhero Wolverine. He's in the bed with the photo. Like the yeah, photo. Oh, I'm not even talking about that one. Yeah. <laughs> someone. <laughs> Someone made an actual claymation meme, like where he showed up at the front door of Tom Brady's house. Oh, no. And okay. held the sign, like, Tom, we love you. So, moving on, oh, Vikings God. and Lions. Both of these guys are out, nothing to play for. But I could see, you know, the Lions are all, they have one of the worst defenses in football. Stafford's all banged up. This is going to be a Kirk Cousins day. 
Wait, that's allowed? I didn't know that was allowed. Yes, it's allowed somehow. Okay, yeah, Vikings. Vikings. Falcons and Buccaneers. Falcons are out. The Buccaneers have locked up a wild card seed. I think they're still they don't know if it's five or six. Right now they're the five. I'm assuming if they win, they're gonna lock in the five. And you know what? It's the Falcons, it's the choke artists, so the Buccaneers are gonna if win. If they don't win this game, yeah, like, like I said earlier, the, the Bucks should pack up as well and not go to the playoffs. Uh, so even even with Devin White out, it's the Falcons, it's the choke artists. Yeah, well. Yeah, it's the Bucks. Who would have thought Matt Ryan would have fallen from grace after Blowing a twenty-eight point lead in in the Super Bowl against the Patriots, and now this uh, happens. All yeah. right, Saints and Panthers again. Saints really bad affected by COVID. Alvin Kamara and Latavius Murray both out, so I guess we'll see Taysom Hill run wild all over the field. So Yikes. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick I'm going to pick the Panthers. Ooh, is McCaffrey back? I still don't know. No, he's not gonna play. God, that. Th- why do I feel like I keep asking that a million times? Because like they keep saying, "Oh, well, we'll see how he's gonna do this week." And I then because we'll a couple of times he's appeared this season, he has balled out, but he's barely been there. So this is, this is a crapshoot game. I like, Breeze is a little banged up. Taysom Hill. I'm if he, I'm gonna agree with Nick. I'm gonna go upset Panthers. Yeah, I'm taking the Panthers. And is Michael Thomas even played? I don't even know. Like I'm Michael totally Thomas wrong. has not looked the same this year. He's looked. I, I think the Saints are in trouble. Actually. Yeah. So. All right, Packers and the Bears. The Packers are fighting for the number one seed, I think, in the NFC. If they win, they're the number one seed. The Bears, I think they're fighting for a wild card, aren't they? Yes, they are. It, d- depending on who their quarterback is. I mean, is it Nick Foles? Is it uh... – Well, it does, it's not going to matter because the Packers are going to lock up the number one seed here. Yeah. By the way, I'm going to go I'm gonna go one step further. I think that Aaron Rodgers is the MVP. Ooh, Ooh really? over, Russell, over Russell Wilson? Yes. Aaron Rodgers has Ooh. had a sick year. He's had a sick year. What has he had, like 40 touchdowns and like five picks? Like Something he, like that. He's had a sick year. It's it's a very close between those two that I just said. Uh, Jaguars and the Colts. Jaguars, obviously the number one pick in the 2021 draft. The Colts fighting for a playoff spot. Yeah, this is going to be a day where old man Rivers actually wins it. Wins out. a game? Yeah. Like, seriously? But, yeah. Think about this. Gonna... Old, when was the last time Old Man Rivers made the playoffs? Ooh, that was twenty. It had to be like twenty twelve, probably. I, was, I don't. I don't know. I forget. But I'm just saying the Chargers. You know, they weren't exactly always a playoff caliber team. I'm gonna go with the Colts regardless because it's yeah. still the Jaguars for God's sake. Yeah, I'm taking the Colts. This is the, the Jaguars are abomination. Titans and the Texans. Uh, it's December. This is always Derrick Henry's month. The Titans are fighting for, I believe, a division title. Yeah, and maybe Deshaun Watson should be careful about taking his teammates to his open restaurant so they don't get fined. But otherwise, yeah, Titans. Uh, oh, boy, if you want one, if you want more and more gut punch because of that whole uh, trade with DeAndre Hopkins, the Texans number what would have been their number three pick is now with the Dolphins. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Woo! Chargers and the Chiefs. Obviously, the Chiefs have locked up the number one seed in the AFC. The Chargers have nothing to play for, so it's going to be a spanking by the Chiefs, even if they rest their players. Mahomes is out. Uh, uh, Clyde edwards Hilaire is yeah. still resting his injury. But I yeah. will say this. I will say this. It might be a little closer with the Stars out, but Justin Herbert, I think, has done enough to be Offensive Rookie of the Year. Oh, yeah. I totally agree with you on that. He's, he's I, looked really good. I like Justin Jefferson of the Vikes, too, to show some love to our dance teams, Nick. But I think Herbert has just – he's proven himself that he can – you know, obviously he has his struggles. When he struggles, he hits a bad floor. But when he, he lights up, like a couple of weeks ago, he lights up big. Yes, absolutely. Bright future, bright future for that young man. Yeah. Raiders, oh, Broncos, boy. both teams nothing to play for. Uh, I'll go with the Spider 2 Y. Yeah, Spider 2 Y. I can't believe I'm going to say this. John Gruden's going to win a game. The Raiders. Oh, all the credits to Drew Locke for making the most of his bad situation. Cardinals and the Rams. Both these teams fighting for a playoff spot. The Cardinals, I believe, are on the outside looking. You know, on the outside as of this moment. The Rams have looked incredibly weak though over the last few games, but the Cardinals are looking like a shadow there for themselves too. Goff so. had an injury also with his thumb. Actually, yeah, Goff's not going to play this week. I think. Right, Goff's out. So. so 
Bortles is going to be the quarterback. All right, everybody. This is the 2020-2021 season in a nutshell. Including Wait a minute. Is Kyler Murray playing, though? I think, yeah, he said he was yeah, playing. He, he made it through. He's not. We're not going to have that guy who has never started an NFL game in his life. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? I'll go with the Cardinals. I, I for yeah, whatever reason, I, I see the Rams go, collapse. I'm go with the Cardinals. I am going with the Cardinals with Goff out. Seahawks, 49ers. Seahawks are fighting for the NFC. Actually, no, they have the NFC West locked up. They pretty much look like they could be a two seed. Although them, the Rams. I mean, them, the Saints, and the Packers are fighting they, for the one. But they the could, Packers win. You know, it doesn't matter. They could beat the Niners with uh, Russell yeah. on the bench if they really wanted to. Yeah. So I'll go with Seahawks. yeah. All right, and now we move on to Sunday Night Football, Washington and the Eagles. Good Lord. Here's, cool. why I, here's where I was going with, with the Giants and Cowboys. I don't think it matters with that game because as much as good as Jalen Hurts has shown he is, as you know, as Washington is banged up, the Eagles and that offensive line being decimated by COVID, I don't see it happening. I see, unfortunately, a bad ending in which Washington, as, as much as karma should bite them in the ass, will end up getting the playoff spot. Good lord! Wait a minute—they're going to win the division. Ooh, yeah, at seven Whoa. and nine. Ooh. Yeah, unfortunately, that's COVID in a nutshell. Ooh. <sighs> so you're good. You're agreeing with Washington? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Unfortunately, even though I like Jalen Hurts and I think he's got a bright future, also. I do, yeah, I agree. It's just but COVID, man. By the way, are we done with the games, or is that yes. one more piece of breaking news? Mark Mass just put out. Uh oh. Steelers say they've placed Joe Hayden, who we said. Now Eric Ebron and Cassius Marsh are on the COVID list also. Oof. So that is going to be a game to watch, Steelers in Cleveland. God, I can't believe this. By the way, if you and we're at the end of the episode, just let's quickly let everybody know what's going on because we have a bunch of new things happening. Yeah, so, so a bunch of new platforms. Follow us on Instagram and on TikTok, both at ETB Sports, yeah. like our like our normal Facebook and Twitter. Yes, are you young whippersnappers on TikTok? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. We're finally getting with the times. So you're going to find... Why do, I, why do I feel like this is like a 70-year-old uh, guy getting a snake tattoo? <laughs> but I was just going to say... So you're going to find clips from the show now. We're going to cut some show clips up so you can review the show. The whole show is going to go up on Instagram TV, on our Instagram channel, so you're going to find that there. You're going to find uh, a bunch of clips. We're going to be doing a new thing called the ETB Sports Minute when we don't have interviews and extra content or, or our breaking news feeds. So you're going to hear from one of us uh, Sunday through Friday. We're not going to do one on Saturday because you're going to get the show from us. Right. So you're going to get six out of the seven days, hopefully, of ETB Sports Minutes. You'll get ETB Sports content every day of the week. You'll be so sick of us soon. <laughs> well, we're picking up the content so people can find us. So, oh god! So d get ready because you're going to see us a bunch. Now we're still working the kinks out, but when we know, you'll know. And by the way, I want to say bravo to the to the audience. We have reached 1,800 likes and follows on our Facebook page. Yeah, thank you for helping well, us surpass. You for with us, yeah. I, thank you for helping us surpass uh, 1,500 during the Christmas season. Hopefully, very soon. Hopefully, before the year is halfway over however good this year could be, we can reach the 2,000 plateau, maybe even the 2,500 plateau. I The big goal, and I know this is a big goal because the guys think I'm crazy sometimes when I reach for certain goals, but by the end of the year, I want us to get to 10,000. That's where I want to get. Which is a reach, but we'll see. With That's your help, we can goal. get there. All but right. Just so people know, this was a longer episode. Obviously, this is an hour episode. We're not going to be doing an hour episode. This is our first episode back, so we wanted to come back and kind of get everything out there. We yeah. are going to go back to 20 to 30-minute episodes. That's Again, working out the kinks. The, I think the plan is 30-minute episodes. That's yeah. where we're going to yeah. be. So for for all of us at the Empty of the Bench, Tom, Tom Albano, Nick Federa, and myself, uh, I guess that's it, right? Yeah, that's going to do it for us. So until next time. Uh, Tom Vanner here along with Nick for there and Nick Morgison. Everybody, have a great day. Happy Good New night, Year. Everybody! Good night and happy new year. Happy New Year, everyone.